Welcome to the Rosny College Electronics series of videos. Today we'll be looking at the uh, NAND gate that's made using uh, MOSFETs. The technology that uh, uses MOSFETs is called CMOS or Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Semiconductors um, be uh, enabled to conduct electricity with an electric field. The electric field allows current to flow through from the source to the drain. The C in CMOS stands for complementary. This means complementary is the same thing but the opposite. Uh, and a good example of something that is complementary is your left and your right shoes in that they look the same except one is a mirror image of the other. The complementary in the sense of uh, CMOS means that we've got both P and N type uh, MOSFETs used in the circuit. Here is a quick diagram or a diagram that you shows this in action. The two top transistors that you can see here, T1 and T2, they are P-type transistors. Now they will conduct when the voltage on the uh, on the gate here, so this is the controlling voltage, which is controlled by our two inputs A and B, they will conduct when the, the that voltage is low they will not conduct when that voltage is high. The two transistors here, T3 and T4, they are N-type transistors that, or N-type uh, MOSFETs that will conduct when the voltage on the gate is high and they will not conduct when the voltage on the gate is low. If you have a look at how this will logically work, you can see that, uh, let's look at T1. T1 is controlled by A and when it's conductive you can think that it becomes effectively a piece of wire. So if T1 is conducting as it's turned on then the drain and the source are very well connected to each other. And Y is connected to the, one of those, so the, probably the source in this case. and um, if Y is connected to there and T1 is conducting, you can say it is very well connected to this positive rail here. Okay. So if A is low, then T1 is going to be conducting, so Y is going to be connected very well to this positive. Likewise, if A is low, then T3, being an N-type MOSFET, will not conduct. And if it's not conducting, it's like it's not even there, as in no current can flow, so Y is not very well connected to this point here. So if A is low, then T1 will conduct and T3 will not conduct, so Y will be very well connected to the positive, and not connected at all to the zero. Likewise, for B and T2 and T4. So if, T, if B is low, then T2 is going to be uh, conductive, and T4 is going to be non-conductive, so Y will be connected to positive. Now, if, if you have a look at how these are connected, T1 and T2 are in parallel, so only one of those needs to be conducting in order for Y to be connected to positive. T3 and T4 are both in series, so in order for Y to be connected to zero, then both T3 and T4 need to be conductive. If we were to look at a truth table for this, it would look something like this. So we're going to have our two inputs, A and B. And let's T1, T2, T3, T4, and Y. Now I'm going to use a shorthand notation where 0 represents a low voltage. So if a zero low voltage is applied to A, that's 0. And if the, T, if the transistor is conductive, that is a 1. So if a high voltage is applied to A, then that will mean that T1 will give me a 0 and T3 will give me a 1. 
So I'm going to go through the four potential states we've got here. So we've got states 0, 0, so where both our inputs A and B are low. We've got a state which is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we'll be looking at each of these four states one at a time. In the case where A and B are both low, we go back to the diagram, if A is low then T1 is conductive, so I'm going to make that 1, T3 is non-conductive, so that's 0, if B is low then T2 is conductive, so that's 1, and T4 is non-conductive, so that's 0. In the case where um, T1 is conductive and either T3 and T4 is not conducting, then the output is going to be connected to positive and we're going to call that a logic 1. So the output is going to be 1. Again, if A is 0, then T1 and T3 are the same. If B is 1, T2 is 0 and T4 is 1. Okay. But remembering we only need one of our T1 and T2 to be uh, a 1 in order for Y to be a 1. In order for Y to be a 0, both T3 and T4 need to be 0, uh, need to be 1. So in this case, the output is going to be 1. So if one of either T1 or T2 is high and one of T3 or T4 is low, then the output is going to be high. And conversely, we see the, opposite, the same effect here if we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, then one of these is high and one of these is low, so the output must be high. If the, on the, in the case where both inputs are high, we can see that if A is high, then T1 is going to be off and T3 is going to be on. If B is high, T2 is going to be off and T4 is going to be on. So both T1 and T2 are, are not conductive, so Y is not connected at all to the positive here. Both T3 and T4 are, are conductive, so Y is going to be connected very well to 0 volts. So in, in our truth table, T1 and T2 are both 0, T3 are both, and T4 are both 1, and so the output is 0. Okay. Now to condense this, I can call my input A, B, And my output, I'm going to call it Y in this case, but it can be called anything. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And in the outco output here, we've got 1, 1, 1, 0. If our two, four transistors are wired as such, so we've got our complementary transistors, so we've got our p-types up here and our n-types down here, and they're connected in such a way, then the output of this, the behaviour of this circuit, will be such that the um, output will look like this for each of the four possible input states. So this we call a not AND. Now if you think about what an AND means, um, so an AND statement, I'll just draw that on another piece of paper. In the logic uh, of AND, we need both A and B true gives output Q true. So I'm going to call it 
the output of this one Q and as a uh, truth table it would look something like this A, B, Q and we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 so my logic states are the same I always draw my four potential variables like uh, four potential input states in this manner so that I can recognize very quickly between the gates logic tables so if both A and B are true it gives the output true and there's only one case where both A and B are true otherwise the output is false or zero now if you can compare that to the truth table for our um, our circuit that we drew before the input states are identical so the order of those are the same and the outputs are simply the opposite of each other so for 0, 0 my AND gives a 0 but this one gave me a 1 for a 0, 1 I got a 0, this one gave me a 1 for a 1, 0 this one gave me a 0 this one gave me a 1 and finally, when they're both true, this one gave me a 1, and this one gave me a 0. So we could say that they are the opposite of each other, or the inverse. So this is the inverse of the AND. And to short that, shorten that, we call it a NAND, or not AND. So a NAND gate is created using four trans transistors set up in this fashion. Next video we'll look at how we can convert uh, many NAND or several NAND gates into the other types of gate.